Okay, that was an E power chord. It just takes one finger to play that. This happens to be the first chord of a lot of songs, but one of my favorite songs, Back in Black, uses that chord. <laughs> Now, you notice I'm playing a guitar that's left-handed, right? So it's not a reverse image. I'm playing my son Dylan's left-handed Gibson SG. Later on in the video, I'm actually going to attempt to play Back in Black. I've never played guitar left-handed before, really, other than today, but I'm going to attempt to play it on this guitar. Before we move on, let's talk about handedness. According to most sources, about 10% of the world's population is left-handed. Now, that actually breaks down into two other categories, people that are ambidextrous, meaning they can use both hands equally, and also people that are cross-dominant. Now, that refers to people that change hand preference between different tasks. For example, my son Dylan. Dylan writes left-handed, as you can see here, but he happens to throw a ball or shoot a basketball right-handed. This picture is of three of my brothers, John, Lou, and Ray. Now, Ray is completely left-handed, and Lou is actually cross-dominant. He writes with his left hand and throws a ball with his right hand, just like Dylan. The difference is that Lou can actually write with both hands, either right or left-handed. As a matter of fact, he can write the same thing at the same time with both hands. People that are ambidextrous or cross-dominant make up only about 1% of the population each. So in my family, two out of seven is actually about 28%. So 28% of us are left-handed. This is actually above the norm of 10%. Then when I was in high school, my guitar teacher, Glenn, was left-handed. So when he would teach me, the guitar neck would go the same way and it was very easy to learn because it was like looking in a mirror. Some guitarists play right-handed guitars flipped over left-handed so that the high E string is on the top of the guitar, like the great Albert King, as you can see here. As you'll notice, when he's bending on the high E string, he's actually pulling it down towards the floor. Eric Ailes is another contemporary guitarist, phenomenal blues guitar player, that also plays the guitar in the same way, a right-handed guitar flipped over left-handed. One of the reasons that right-hand people play with a pick in the right hand and finger with the left hand is because of this, the pick. Think about this. When you are writing... This is me writing a chart here with my right hand. And you are picking, right? Pretty much the same motion as writing. That's why it feels natural to strum and play single notes with the right hand because it's pretty much like writing. The same thing goes for left-handed people. If you write with your left hand, well, you're gonna pick up your left-handed guitar and strum that way. When my son Dylan picked up the guitar for the first time, he immediately held it this way because it was natural for him. Interestingly enough, in the orchestra, think about violin, viola, cello, and bass. They are all right-handed. Why is that? Well, one of the reasons is if you have a left-handed violin and they're sitting next to a right-hander, you're going to be stabbing each other with a bow, and it doesn't look uniform. So orchestral instruments are made for right-handed people. The piano, is that a right-handed instrument? Well, all the melody lines are typically in the right hand. Yeah, you can have the melody in the left hand too. But typically, melodies are played in the higher register with the right hand. The few instruments that are actually made for lefties happen to be the guitar, electric bass, and drums. If you think about bands like Genesis, Phil Collins played drums left-handed. He played the drum kit backwards, right? Paul McCartney played his bass left-handed. As a matter of fact, a lot of the biggest bands of all time have had lefties in them. Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain from Nirvana, Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath, all lefties. Like I said, Paul McCartney on the bass. Doug Pinnock, bass player and singer of King's X, left-handed. So there's many examples in rock music of left-handed musicians, and they happen to be in some of the biggest bands of all time. I've always been fascinated with how babies learn language or how people learn to do things like swim, learn how to play instruments, or learn how to ride bicycles. To do these things, your brain uses a series of algorithms that are developed over time and through repetition. There's a great video called The Backwards Bicycle that one of my favorite YouTube channels, Smarter Every Day, Destin, the host, tries to learn how to ride a bicycle that works backwards. So when he turns to the left, 
he goes to the right. When he turns to the right, he goes to the left. And this is extremely difficult to do. Here he is explaining why. I had the knowledge of how to operate the bike, but I did not have the understanding. Therefore, knowledge is not understanding. Look, I know what you're probably thinking. Destin's probably just an uncoordinated engineer and can't do it. But that's not the case at all. The algorithm that's associated with riding a bike in your brain is just that complicated. Think about it. Downwards force on the pedals, leaning your whole body, pulling and pushing the handlebars, gyroscopic precession in the wheels. Every single force is part of this algorithm. And if you change any one part, it affects the entire control system. So me attempting to play the guitar left-handed is the exact same thing. I know all there is to know about playing back in black, what the chords are, how the riffs go, how the rhythms go. But my brain has none of the algorithms associated with the muscle coordination to do it using the opposite hands. This is my backwards bicycle here, the left-handed guitar. Now I'm going to attempt to try to play them. How do you put on a stra <laughs> strap backwards? This is really, okay, this is strange. So it goes over, how's it go? Wait a second, <laughs> no. Billy, how's it go? To go over the what shoulder? You gotta put it over your right shoulder now. Okay, over this. This is like this. Oh my god, this is weird. Is, backwards? is this backwards? Yeah. Wait. Is it? No, that's right. That's no, right. No, you gotta flip the strap. Oh. The color's supposed to be on the other side. The color's on the other side. Okay. See, I can't even put the strap on. How am I gonna play the thing if I if I can't even get the strap right? Okay. So there's that. Oh man. Yeah. This is uh. Let's see, got the, you got to turn it up. Even the knobs are backwards here, I got my pick. Okay, um, okay, so we're gonna start. So the first chord is just this. Okay, there we go. The D chord. Oh man, that's bad. And then the riff. Bend a wrong string. Let me practice the riff again. Um. I will never get mad. I mean, I'm basically a beginner, right? That, that's it. I'm a beginner. Be, totally, total beginner. I have all the knowledge. I know where the chord forms are. I know how to angle my fingers, everything. I just can't do it. The weird thing is that this is my dominant hand, right? I play. I can play the piano with my right hand. I write with my right hand. Everything I do, I throw a ball. I shoot a basketball. Everything with my right hand. You'd think I'd have the fine motor skills to be able to play these basic power chords, right? This only involves one finger here. This involves two fingers, the D power chord, and the A power chord involves one finger. The riff though, forget it. I can't even come close to playing the riff. In the Smarter Everyday video, it took Destin eight months to learn how to ride the bicycle backwards. And I would guess that it would take me about eight months to do the same thing, to be able to play back in black May, maybe only the first few phrases I'd be able to play. We, we're not even talking about power chords or bar chords. They would be very, very weird. So this really gives me a lot more patience for beginning guitar players. It's tough to do. It's tough to begin. But if you practice every day, he practiced, I think he said, about five, ten minutes a day, and it took him eight months. That's probably about right. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment. Check out my new Quick Lessons Pro guitar course that just came out. Also, the Beato book, if you want to learn about music theory, that's how you do it. And check out my Beato ear training course at beatoeartraining.com. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.